I wanted to finish up the podcast, though, by talking about a argument that I had with Jim Rickards in an interview that I did with Kitgo. And they broke the interview down to three parts. And it was the third part of the interview where we had the disagreement. We pretty much agreed on everything up until that point. And you can see all three of these uh, parts up on YouTube. But where we started to argue was on the definition of inflation, because Jim kept talking about the fact that we weren't having any inflation. And I said, but Jim, we have massive inflation. What do you think the Federal Reserve is doing? They're inflating like crazy. They're printing all this money. Money supply is expanding. And then Jim said, no, 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 that's not inflation. Inflation is rising prices. And I said, but Jim, that's not the definition of inflation. And he said, sure, you can't just make up any definition that you want. And I said, I'm not the one making it up. It's the government that made up a definition. And I pointed out to Jim that the original definition of inflation was an expansion of the supply of money and credit, and that it was the government that had altered the definition to suit its own purpose. And I said that he was simply helping to perpetuate government propaganda by pretending that inflation was what the government claims it is rather than what it actually is. Because the reason the government wants to claim that inflation is rising prices is because then it can pretend that it doesn't cause it. Right. If the government accepts the definition of inflation as an expansion of the supply of money, well, everybody knows who's expanding the supply of money. It's the Fed. So when you have an accurate definition of inflation, then you know exactly who's to blame. But if the government can fool people into believing that an effect of inflation is inflation, well, then they can blame it on whoever's raising the prices. And that's what they do. They blame it on greedy capitalists, or they blame it on labor unions, or they blame it on OPEC, or they blame it on speculators, or can blame it on the Chinese. And so what Jim Rickards is doing is helping the government deflect blame away from itself and to mislead and fool the public into believing that inflation is rising prices when, in fact, inflation is an expansion in the supply of money and credit, and it's the Federal Reserve that is doing the inflating. And in fact, I even pointed out to Jim Rickards that if he had an old dictionary and he looked up inflation, that that would be the definition, that it would say inflation was an expansion of the money supply and the credit supply. And Jim said no. He basically disagreed with me and said, no, inflation is increasing prices, and that's always been the definition. And I knew he was wrong about that. And in fact, uh, somebody who had watched that uh, emailed me a photograph because they had an older Webster's Dictionary, I think from the 1960s. And so he sent me a picture and then I tweeted out the picture. You can see it on, uh, on my Twitter, but I've got it in front of me. I will read the definition right now. And here it is, inflation, the act of inflating, the state of being inflated, sharp increase in amount of money and credit causing advances in the general price level. So the definition of inflation mentions increases in the general price level, but only as the result of inflation, which had it already defined as being a sharp increase in the amount of money and credit. That was the definition. Inflation, sharp increase in the amount of money and credit, causing advances in the price level. So advances in the price level are not inflation. They were caused by inflation. Inflation was defined as a sharp increase in the amount of money and credit, not an advancement in the general level of prices. The dictionary simply mentioned that inflation caused a increase in the level of prices, but defined the inflation itself as a sharp increase in the amount of money and credit. And in fact, if you go far enough back into the past, if you get a dictionary maybe from the 1930s, right, and you look up inflation, it won't even mention prices. I have seen old Webster's dictionaries where they define the word inflation and they don't even mention prices. They simply define inflation as an expansion in the supply of money and credit and they leave it at that. It was at some point in the future that they added the effect of inflation on the general price level. But of course, if you get a dictionary today, if you look up inflation in a 2020 edition of Webster's you know, dictionary, they're not going to mention prices 
money supply. It's simply going to say inflation is an increase in the general price level. So the definition has simply been altered over time, but that doesn't actually change the real meaning of the word. But this is what we see all the time, right? This happens with the constitution, right? Where definitions are changed, right? The government changes the way terms are defined the same way uh, that we measure economic statistics. The government changes the way inflation is measured. The government changes the way GDP is measured. The government changes the way unemployment is measured, right? They're always changing the meaning of words to try to advance a political agenda. And that's exactly what's happened with the word inflation. And so I think people need to stay true to uh, reality. I don't care if the government wants to misdefine inflation. I don't care if the Federal Reserve wants to misdefine inflation. That doesn't mean that we should do it too. People that actually understand what inflation is need to call it what it is. They need to describe inflation accurately. The word itself, inflate. And I keep talking about this. If you even think about the word inflation, what does that mean? inflate means to expand, right? If you inflate something, you expand it. When you inflate a balloon, right, you blow air into a balloon, what happens to the balloon? It expands, right? It gets larger. When you deflate a balloon, what happens to the balloon? It contracts. So inflation is an expansion. Deflation is a contraction. Prices don't inflate, right? Prices don't expand and contract. Prices go up and prices go down. Right. So the word inflate was not meant to refer to prices, which can expand and contract. It was meant to refer to the supply of money and to the supply of credit, which can expand and contract. So I want to keep the original definition of inflation because that's key to understanding it. See, when you misdefine inflation as rising prices, the result is bad Uh, monetary policy and bad fiscal policy because the government, the central bank can keep on inflating. And if all they're doing is looking at consumer prices and they don't see them going up and they think, oh, there's no inflation, they can keep on creating it. And inflation is doing a lot of damage. And of course, the other problem is the way they're measuring consumer prices is so flawed that you don't even see the effects of inflation because they're being masked behind a rigged CPI. So the government keeps on creating inflation and then they point to this rigged CPI that says there's no inflation. And, you know, It's like if you have a thermometer that's broken, right? And no matter what your temperature is, it says 98.6. You can be as sick as a dog, but if you keep relying on that thermometer, that broken thermometer, then you don't think you're sick. Well, you know, you could ignore all the signs, right, that, that the patient is shivering and there's, you know, and, you know, they, they got all kinds of symptoms. But if you ignore the symptoms and just look at that broken thermometer, right, the guy's going to eventually die because you're relying on faulty equipment. That is what the Federal Reserve is doing when they're ignoring all of the other effects of inflation and just staring at this broken CPI and thinking that there's no problem. So anyway, I just wanted to bring that up and that, you know, that tweet is out there with that definition. Uh, but that basically proves that I was right in that bit of a debate. I mean, I got a lot of respect for Jim Rickards, but I wish he would get this one thing right. Stop falling into this trap. This is exactly what the government wants. This is exactly what the Federal Reserve wants. They want us to repeat their lie and to misdefine uh, inflation. Well, I want to call it for what it is. Inflation is an expansion of supply of money and credit, and there's only one cause of inflation, and that is the U.S. government. And when Donald Trump is increasing government spending and cutting taxes, he is calling for more inflation. That's what he wants. He wants the Federal Reserve to inflate the money supply so that we can send out these $400 a month checks. He wants the Federal Reserve to print money so that he can send that money to people on Social Security instead of taking taxes from the current workers. So Donald Trump wants more inflation. The Federal Reserve is going to deliver more inflation. And what Americans need to do is avoid that inflation tax before it's too late by getting money out of U.S. dollars, getting into foreign assets, and getting into gold and silver.